Ladies and gentlemen, Minecraft PC Edition 1.12 is out. As of this very moment, you can go to the Minecraft launcher and you can get Minecraft 1.12 called the World of Colors Update. My name is Sliced Lime. I am here to give you a comprehensive look at all of the changes and additions since the previous version of Minecraft 1.11.2. Do note that while this video will contain all of the bigger updates, this will not be a complete list of all of the hundreds of bugs that have been fixed in this version. That would take far, far too long. However, I will mention a few notable bugs that have a large impact on the game. Another thing that won't be in this video will be commands and map making stuff. Instead, those topics will be covered in separate update videos and tutorials. Now. Because this will still be a fairly long video, I've split it up into sections. Sadly, because YouTube has removed the annotation system, I can't make these into clickable links anymore. But if you want to skip to a section, open up the description of the video and all of the times will be listed there so you can click there and get right to the section you want. With that said, let's dive in to items and blocks. This is the World of Colors update, so a lot of these have to do with changes to colors and with the new and colorful blocks. The first thing that we're going to talk about is Stained Hardened Clay, which is no longer called Stained Hardened Clay, it is now called Terracotta, and the reason for this is that they can now be processed. Throw a terracotta block into a furnace and you will get a glazed terracotta block. They come in all 16 colors and each color has a wildly different colorful pattern. The blocks are directional, so depending on which direction you are looking when you place the block, it will be placed in a different way. Another interesting property of glazed terracotta blocks is that they don't stick to slime blocks, so they can be used together with slime blocks in machines where you would previously have to use either obsidian or a block with a tile entity like a furnace. In addition to the glazed terracotta, there's another new set of blocks in all 16 colors as well. It is the concrete powder. It has a grainy texture just like sand and it also falls like sand, but of course it comes in 16 different colors. This is a crafted block, you craft it from 4 blocks of sand and 4 blocks of gravel, plus the die for the color you want the blocks to be in. Each recipe like this gives you 8 concrete powder blocks. The recipe is shapeless, you can put the components into the crafting grid in any order that you would like. They are gravity effective blocks and will as such behave just like sand does, with one very important difference. When they touch water, they turn into another new type of block, the concrete block. Concrete also of course come in all the 16 colors and it is a hard block that can be mined with a pickaxe. There's no way to turn a concrete block back into concrete powder so be careful around water if you want to keep it in powder form. In this new and colorful update wool, sheep and banners have changed their color palette somewhat. They now have new and a little bit more vibrant colors. This also goes for shulkers and shulker boxes with the exception of the undyed shulker which is still the old color to blend in to the end cities. Beds also have colors now. In this update you can craft a colored bed either by using colored wool instead of white wool or taking a white bed and applying a piece of dye to it. There's also another change to beds. They are somewhat bouncy now. A bit like slime blocks are, except they don't negate all of the falling damage and they don't bounce you quite as high. There are other changes to blocks as well that don't have as much to do with colors. Magma blocks now burn infinitely, just like netherrack does. Blocks that connect to other blocks, like fences or glass panes, now also connect to more different types of blocks. They will now connect to the backside of stairs and you will be able to put a torch on the backside of stairs as well. Snow layers can now also be placed on top of upside down stairs, as well as on top of top half slabs. To round off this section, some changes to paintings. It's now easier to get the painting that you want when you're placing paintings through a new system. Paintings will now take up the maximum amount of space available to them when you place them, and select one of the available paintings for that size. If you want a smaller painting, restrict the area further, and if you want a bigger painting, make sure to remove any obstacles. Let's move on to the mobs section. We have a new passive mob in the game in Minecraft 1.12, the parrot. Parrots are passive mobs that spawn in jungles, in five different variants. They are a flying mob, so they can fly around, but they also sit down when they get a little bit tired. Parrots can also imitate the sound of other mobs, and they like to follow other mobs around when they do so. They spawn with three hearts of health, 
and when killed they drop a feather and some XP. Parrots can be tamed and turned into pets using seeds. Right click on them with a seed and they will either tame showing some heart particles or they will fail to tame and show some black particles. Tamed parrots follow the player around just like other pets and will teleport to you if you are too far away. They can also be told to sit like other pets and in that case they will stop teleporting to you. When they are following you they will sometimes fly to you and sit on your shoulder. You can have one parrot on each shoulder and they will sit on your shoulder as you move around. But if you jump the parrots will get off your shoulder and they will also flee from your shoulders if you jump into water or if you take damage. Parrots can be fed cookies, but since chocolate is poisonous to parrots, and since the cookies in the game are chocolate chip cookies, feeding a cookie to a parrot poisons it and kills it immediately. Finally, the pets are party parrots. The parrots will dance when they are near a jukebox, and that jukebox starts playing a record. Other pet news as well, pet dogs will no longer attack pet cats or pet parrots if you accidentally hit them, and all types of pets will no longer teleport into dangerous blocks like lava and fire. There's a new enemy mob in the game as well. It is the Illusioner Illager. It has no spawn egg, it doesn't spawn in the world, and the only way to get it into the world currently is to use a slash summon command, but you might still see this one in custom maps and such. This is a hostile Illager type mob with 16 hearts of health. They will attack players, villagers and iron golems that come within 12 blocks of them. It is a wizard type enemy and it has two different spells. It can become invisible and create three or four illusion copies of itself. This is signaled by the spellcaster holding up his hands and blue particles appearing on those hands. Once invisible you can still see the particles and all of the clones will act just as the illusioner does. However, only the actual real illusioner will be able to take damage and attack. Any damage you manage to inflict through the real illusioner will cancel the spell. The second spell it has is a blindness spell. It will cast blindness on a target when you are playing on hard, difficulty or above. This is signaled by the caster holding up his hands and the black particles appearing. The illusioner also has a bow which it uses to attack. One final change to the behavior of mobs. Zombie pigment will no longer prevent you from sleeping in a bed unless you have hit them or otherwise made them hostile first. Let's look at gameplay changes. There is now a recipe book in the crafting interfaces. The recipe book is a little book icon that can be clicked to open up a searchable interface of items that you know how to craft. Recipe is unlocked to showing in this book on different criteria. Most items will unlock when you have the ingredients to craft that item, but there are some exceptions like boats which unlock whenever you touch water or torches that unlock whenever you have a stone pickaxe. To find a certain recipe in the recipe book, click on its category icon on the side or use the search field at the top. Recipes that require a 3x3 crafting grid do not show up in the recipe book when you are crafting in the 2x2 grid in the inventory. Whenever you unlock one or more new recipes, a toast will show up in the top right hand corner of the screen announcing this and showing you the icons of the things that you just learned to craft. Normally you don't have to unlock a recipe to be able to craft it in the good old fashioned way. Instead, crafting an item in the crafting grid will also unlock its recipe. However, there is a new game rule in the game. It is called Do Limited Crafting and setting that game rule to true will disable crafting a recipe until you have unlocked that recipe. There is also a new item in the game called the Knowledge Book. This book cannot be found in normal survival but you might find it in a custom map. Using the book will consume it and unlock one or more recipes for you to use. The recipes in the recipe book show up in different border colors. If you have the ingredients, the recipe border is white, otherwise the border is red. There's also an option button at the top to enable a mode where you can only see the recipes that you have the ingredients for. Any recipe that you do have the ingredients for can be clicked to move the ingredients for that recipe into the crafting grid. For recipes with several different variations, you can click and hold the mouse button to bring up a selection grid. Here you will see all of the different variations and whether you have the items or not. Shift clicking a recipe will move as many items as possible to the crafting grid to craft as many as possible at once, and clicking normally several times over will increase the crafting amount one at a time. 
In other crafting news, if you put items in the crafting grid and then close the crafting window, those items will no longer pop out onto the ground. Instead, they will, if possible, be put back into your inventory. Other gameplay news, there are now tutorial pop-ups, hints, that pop up at the start of the game. If you've never seen these hints before, they will pop up until you've done them once and then go away forever. The first tutorial is about learning how to move around and jump. Once you've completed that tutorial, you will get a tutorial about knocking down a log from a tree and then to craft some planks from that material. If you in any way demonstrate your ability to do these things, the tutorials will skip, like if you've already got a plank in your inventory, or if you already have a log in your inventory, and so on. Some other noteworthy gameplay changes and the bug fixes. You now get knocked back when you get hit by another player, even if you are sneaking. Previously there was an error, which meant that you were not knocked back in that case. When you leave the end after killing the dragon, the end game credits now show up only the first time you leave, not on the subsequent times. If you walk directly backwards and you look at that in the third person view, your character will walk directly backwards instead of somewhat sideways as it did before. And one final bug fix to mention when it comes to redstone. Hoppers and droppers can now feed items correctly into brewing stands again, even if the bottles had previously been pulled out by another hopper. This means that automated brewing systems start working again in this version. Let's move on to talking about advancements. Advancements are a new system that completely replaces the achievements in the game. In exactly the same place where there was an achievement button, there is now an advancements button. It opens a new window with a tab display for several categories of advancements and can also be opened with a new key. It's a keybind that you can change in the controls settings menu and the default button is L. By default in the game there are five categories, but this can be extended in custom maps by map makers. Each category is a tree-like structure spreading out from a single root advancement, and every time you get an advancement the follow-up advancements show up in the display. For each advancement there is a name, a description and an icon, and some advancements also have a progress number towards which you are working along. The five vanilla categories are Minecraft, Husbandry, The Nether, the end and adventure. Many of the achievements from the previous versions have been turned into advancement in this one. However, there is also a whole load of new ones, so let's take a look at some of those. There's the suit up advancement which you get from protecting yourself with a piece of iron armor. And not today, thank you, for deflecting an arrow with a shield. There's now hot stuff for filling a bucket with lava and the ice bucket challenge for forming and mining a block of obsidian. The Cover Me With Diamonds advancement is for putting on a piece of diamond armor, and the Zombie Doctor one is for weakening and then curing a zombie villager. The Husbandry tab holds advancements related to food items, growing things and to animals. The repopulation achievement has been replaced by the parrots and the bats. That goes for breeding any two animals together. That then leads to 2x2, two which involves breeding all of the breedable animals. There's also a best friends forever for taming an animal and a seedy place for planting a seed. That leads to a balanced diet which involves eating every single thing in the game, even the things that makes your stomach hurt. And finally there's the serious dedication advancement for completely using up a diamond hoe. The adventure tab contains things related to adventure and exploration. The Monster Hunter achievement has moved into this tab, and it is followed up by Monsters Hunted, which now involves killing one of every hostile monster in the game. Here you will also find Take Aim to shoot something with a bow and arrow, and that leads into the good old sniper duel, killing a skeleton with an arrow from more than 50 meters away. And note that this is horizontal distance, so shooting down or up on a skeleton doesn't count. This also leads to Post Mortal, which is using a totem of undying to cheat death. The adventure tab also contains what a deal for successfully trading with a villager and hired help for summoning an iron golem to help defend a village. Finally, we have sweet dreams to change your respawn point by sleeping in a bed, which leads into adventuring time, the good old discover every biome in the game, advancement for 36 different biomes. The nether tab unsurprisingly contains advancement relating to the nether. 
Here we find the classics return to Zender to destroy a ghast with a fireball and that leads into a new friend, Uneasy Alliance. That involves rescuing a ghast from the nether, bringing it safely home to the overworld. And then killing it. Sorry ghast friend. There's also a new challenge in here, called Subspace Bubble. This involves using the nether to travel 7 kilometers, that is 7,000 blocks, in the overworld. What this means is essentially exit the nether 7 kilometers or more away from where you entered it. Some other well-known achievements have moved into this one as well, as follow-ups to a terrible fortress which involves breaking your way into another fortress. That leads to Into Fire, which is relieving a blaze of its rod, and Local Brewery, both of those known from achievements before. However, those lead into some new interesting challenges. A furious cocktail for having every potion effect applied at the same time. That means make sure that you get the effect from everything that you can brew. Not necessarily the second level, but every single type of effect. After that there's actually another advancement and it is the only one in the entire game that is a hidden challenge. That means that this challenge does not show up in your advancements pane until after you get it. It is called How Did We Get Here? And that involves having every single effect applied at the same time. So what is every single effect? Well, you have to have all of this at the same time. Speed, slowness, strength, jump boost, regeneration, fire resistance, water breathing, invisibility, night vision, weakness, poison wither, haste, mining fatigue, levitation, glowing, absorption, hunger, nausea, and resistance. In this tab you will also find Spooky Scary Skeleton, which is to obtain a Wither Skeleton Skull, Withering Heights to summon the Wither, Bring Home the Beacon to construct and place a beacon, and Beaconator to bring a beacon to full power. That leaves only the End tab, which contains the classical things and more for the end. There's a new challenge in here called The Next Generation to hold the Dragon Egg. There's also one called The End Again, involving respawning the Ender Dragon, and you need a mint for collecting the dragon's breath in a glass bottle. The rest of the tracks lead off to the Outer Rim, the remote getaway for escaping the island, the city at the end of the game, for entering an end city, and the sky is the limit for finding a pair of elytra wings, and then finally, great view from up here, which involves levitating 50 blocks up from the attacks of a shulker. Some of the advancements also give a reward, these are not all of the advancements, but only the ones called challenges, the ones that pop up in purple text when you complete them. And the reward you get is experience points, different amounts depending on the difficulty of the challenge. So in the adventure tab, the sniper duel challenge giving 50 experience points, the monsters hunted challenge for killing all of the different monsters for 100 experience points and the adventuring time challenge for discovering every biome for 500 experience points. In the husbandry tab there are three of them, 2x2 two two for breeding all the animals, a balanced diet for eating all of the things and serious dedication for using up a diamond hoe. All of those three give 100 experience points each. In the nether tab there are several of them. Return to Sander for destroying a ghast with a fireball for 50 experience points. Then Uneasy Alliance for rescuing a ghast from the nether and then killing it in the overworld. Subspace Bubble for using the nether to travel 7000 blocks in the overworld. And a Furious Cocktail for having every potion effect applied at the same time. Those three give 100 experience points. And then How Did We Get Here that grants 1000 experience points. One single one in the end tab, it's the great view from up here one for levitating up 50 blocks from the attacks of a shulker for 50 experience points. And that was the end of our rundown of all these new challenges in the game. Let's move on to talking about sounds and sound related things. There's a new system in the game called the narrator system. This has four modes, it is either off, narrator, off. can narrate all, which means both chat and system messages. Narrator narrates all. It can narrate the chat. Narrator narrates chat. Or it can narrate system messages. Narrator narrates system. The system uses your system's text-to-speech service to read out the chat and or the system messages depending on your settings. It is toggled narrator. in the option screen under the chat settings narrator. button or using the quick key control plus B. Sliced Lime says hi. I'm the new narrator feature. 
reading all of the chat messages. For sounds in the game, there are new sounds for note blocks placed on different blocks. They are a xylophone sound for bone blocks, a bell sound for gold blocks, a flute sound for clay blocks, chimes for packed ice blocks, and a guitar sound for wool blocks. The default harp sound has also been updated. It is a very slight change, but it involves a little bit more reverb on the harp sound. Let's see if you can tell the difference. There's also other new sounds in the game. Of course, the new mobs, parrots and the illusioner have their own new sounds. Uh -huh. But there's also sounds for things that existed before, like casting a fishing rod, reeling in a fishing rod, throwing an eye of ender, an eye of ender exploding or dropping to an item, placing an eye of ender in the end portal frame, Placing the last Eye of Ender in the portal frame, and thus completing the portal. Paddling a boat. Paddling a boat on the land. Taking damage by drowning. And finally, taking damage by burning. For our last section in the video, we're going to talk about a few changes to creative mode specifically. It is now possible to save and restore preset hotbar configurations in creative mode. To do this, hold down C and press a number to store that number's preset, and hold down X and press the same number to restore that preset later. You can also see your saved hotbars in a new pane inside of the creative inventory. The rest of the creative inventory menu has also been reordered a bit. Materials and miscellaneous have been merged in order to find space for this new pane. And that, my friend, leads us to the end of the big list of changes for Minecraft 1.12. To get this version, simply point your Minecraft launcher to use the latest available version and it will download and run this version automatically. One thing I will mention is that this version is the first version to use Java 8. If you are using the new Minecraft launcher, it will take care of all of that for you and install the correct version of Java. If you are not using the launcher, you might have to upgrade your system Java runtime environment to be able to run this version of Minecraft. I hope you enjoy this new World of Colors version of Minecraft, and I hope you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, please help me out in return and leave a like on the video. My name is Slice Slime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Take care, bye bye.